Hey there, welcome back. Retro PC Durham. Chris here with another box. This is, as you can see, a delightful HP system that I received as a donation from someone. They were finished using this system. It was actually a complete a complete system that the person donated to me. Uh, the box uh, with a keyboard and mouse. I've got uh, the keyboard here. Make sure I don't knock everything else on the floor. So I got the the, the keyboard here. Uh, uh, what the, what's referred to as a multimedia keyboard, which means it's got a mute button and volume buttons on it. Uh, <laughs> and then um, and then a simple uh, you know a simple laser USB mouse, optical mouse that came with it as well. Uh, and then there was a um, a monitor that was included as well, which is currently being actually, but because we're all home right now, um, my wife is using the monitor that came with this uh, for uh, home home office use because uh, she's gener normally doesn't work from home, so would not be included there. So got the whole box here. Uh, I'm just going to show off, you know, what we've got on the outside here on the front panel, uh, media tray up in the front here, which is pretty common on these type of systems. Uh, and then you've got two expansion bays uh, for optical drives. One is already installed, obviously, here, this uh, light scribe DVD multi burner. Uh, and then this one is blank here. I didn't I didn't go ahead and install a second one because realistically, it's not really needed anymore. And then there's a third expansion bay. You can pop out this panel here, uh, which you could fit a, another media tray, possibly, or a floppy disk drive or zip drive or super disk or something. And then we slide down this slot here. We have access to two USB 2.0 ports as well as your uh, front audio ports. So, and that, you know, has that little hideaway stuff. Always love these old uh, systems that have these slide down panels. I remember um, if you ever go and look online for the old Aptiva uh, systems that IBM used to sell, and they had a couple different models where like you could push a button and it would slide the whole panel down, or they'd have these kind of manual slide downs as well. Neat. All right, we'll turn this to the side and we can take a look at the side panel here. Uh, most of this information is, is still relatively accurate. Um, this is a HP Pavilion um, P6130FPC, um, AMD Phenom 9750. This is a four core uh, non-hyper threaded processor, I believe at 2.4 gigahertz. Uh, 8 gig of system memory, uh, which I still have installed in there. Uh, the hard drive was not included with this system, so I did have to install one. I did have, uh, this was a kind of a, you know, workaround wonky one. I had a, an old uh, a hard drive that had come out of another system that had Windows 7 installed on it, uh, but it was, the hard drive was actually dying. <laughs> but I was able to get it installed on here and do an upgrade to Windows 10 and then replace that with a 250 gig hard drive that is in much better shape. I think it's 250. We'll see when we get this thing up and running. Uh, that super multi DVD burner. Jeez uh, Louise. An NVIDIA GeForce 9100 integrated graphics, which we'll talk a little bit more about. Uh, Wi-Fi, uh, which uh, is available via a card that's installed on here, and I had to do some stuff with that. And then the Windows Vista, obviously, which is no longer installed on this system. So we'll slide and take a look at the back here uh, of the machine. Uh, so the power supply uh, staying on track here. Uh, one of these old you know, power supplies that's nice when you plug it in, it lets you know that there's power actually working on it before you spread it up. Uh, the uh, Wi-Fi adapter, which is in a PCI card slot, it did not have any antennas included. So I did have, from a previous time, I picked up a bunch of computer gear from a guy. He had a whole bunch of uh, Wi-Fi antennas that had come off of uh, Wi-Fi routers. Uh, so I picked two that seemed to match the color coordination. These are uh, Linksys, I think. Yeah, these are Linksys. So they came off a Linksys router or something, um, but they fit perfectly. Obviously, it's an industry standard uh, sizing. So that's installed there. And then our system board down here with, uh, you know, keyboard mouse ports. And then you've got your uh, your video uh, connectivity as well for the integrated graphics, which, again, we will have to get to. Let's pop it open and take a look and see uh, how we look on internals. Um, HP used this uh, case the general case frame design for a number of different product lines, both in their HP and their Compaq uh, products, which is, you know, like a mix of business and consumer based um, machines. Uh, the front panels would change from time to time, but this basic frame design is, is very similar. In fact, I had a Compaq machine that, that I, we did a couple weeks ago that, that inside is exactly the same. This hard drive tray was missing 
out of it. So I wasn't able to, uh, on that one, I wasn't able to install the hard drive the same way, but on this one, I had it so I could install a, the drive the way it's supposed to be installed and run the cabling and everything. So you can see on the inside here, we've got our, our AMD uh, processor stock cooler, a system fan here to help with cooling, which is needed because of some issues, uh, memory drives, uh, if you needed a floppy disk drive, it does have a floppy disk controller integrated into the board, and then everything else is on PCI. There's there's four PCI connectors on the board, um, or sorry, four SATA connectors on the board, uh, one of which is being used for the hard drive, the other for the, uh, the multimedia uh, burner. There is a spot here for a PCI uh, by 16, so you can add a discrete graphics card, um, and that is something that um, I had looked at doing on this system, uh, because one of the challenges that we faced with this, you know, came came from the integrated graphics, which again, we'll talk about um, once we get the system booted up and I show you the reason why that's a problem if you don't already know. So let's get this baby, um, you know, just a note here, like some of the interesting things on this on this box was the the strange mix of like being able to fix uh, work on parts of the machine and not work on other parts of the machine. So, you know, you've got the thumb screw to remove the side panel. You've got these very simple, uh, you know, latch hinges to be able to add and remove optical drives. But all the other components in the system have these screws that you can use a slotted screwdriver to get on it, but otherwise it's using like a hex screw, which normally people don't have those in their toolboxes. Um, and it's not secure hex, so it doesn't have the little notch in it, but why you would use those type of screws instead of a standard uh, Phillips screw that almost every other computer uses doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, these are only going to end up costing you more unless that at whatever time they were making these, they got a really good deal from the screw manufacturer, to, you know, to buy the 1 million screws they were going to buy for the year. And that was like, you know, a quarter of a hundredth of a penny less per screw than buying a Phillips head screw. <laughs> Uh, it doesn't make any sense to me why you would do this when it's something that's so easy to bypass anyway. But regardless, let's get the um, let's get this back together here. Put the lid back on. Uh, make sure we're all lined up here and everything fits in the right slots. These side panels over time always because it's such a thin metal that's normally used, they get warped over time, and uh, you always end up having them where there's just one little spot at the top or at the bottom or in the middle doesn't really fit right so I need a little bit of TLC all right let's get this thing up and running now now we're gonna hit that power button and get this thing booted up You'll hear lots of computer noises. Checks that media tray for connected devices. There's our splash screen. And then we'll start loading up into Windows 10. Pretty quick load, I got to admit, um, with the spinning drive, but uh, the, the, the system, uh, relatively speaking, is pretty snappy. Um, that Phenom processor seems to operate pretty well um, with the amount of memory that's available to it and, 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 and works out pretty good as far as performance is concerned. So we'll take a look here at what's going on in the system here. Oh, look, my USB optical mouse is set up and ready to go. I guess I plugged it into a different slot this time. So I'm going to get hardware info up and running here first. And I want to show you uh, just some of the, the details on this system. Obviously, I mentioned most of this already when we were, we were looking at that, that sticker panel. Oh, don't need to upgrade. So we've got this AMD Phenom 9750. Uh, again, that's a four-core non-hyper-threaded processor uh, with a base clock of 2.4 gigahertz. And then... Uh, we've got a 300 gig, well, I said 250, but it was a 300, uh, 300 gig uh, SATA drive, and this is running at SATA 3, so pretty decent transit, um, but and obviously much better than the previous drive I had booted this system with originally, which I think is an a, was an 80 gig, um, 80 gig drive, I believe, and it's got 
bad sectors so <laughs> not really something that i want to um have leave the leave the workbench uh in any machine that someone's going to be using because it's, it's you know only going to end up causing problems later on uh memory we've got uh four samsung uh, memory sticks are all identical this pc uh pc2 6400 memory so eight gig total memory and then we've got this nvidia geforce 9100 uh integrated chipset uh, which is grabbing apparently 256 megabytes of RAM uh, off of uh, off of the system. So let's take a look and I'll show you here first of all how we'll minimize this for now and we're going to open up the Google Chrome and do the old uh, the old YouTube uh, test and just show you know does this perform well enough? Obviously the processor and the amount of memory seems to be perfectly adequate. Uh, whether or not this uh, graphics adapter can handle that, I. I Again, something that would be at that kind of quality, I might say, oh, I don't know if I want to do that. Uh, I don't know if I want to use that if it's not going to be able to handle doing some, some sim something as simple as watching full screen 1080p YouTube. Um, I would expect, based on the other system capabilities, that this is going to be able to, uh, this is going to be able to handle that no problem. So let's take a look and see here. This is at 1440p right now. If I go full screen, how is this going to handle it? And again, this is a, a 900p monitor. So uh, we're doing okay here. I'm not seeing any frame skips. I'm not seeing anything look like it's not working out okay as far as screen quality is concerned. So this graphics processor obviously is able to take care of itself and handle itself for doing this type of graphics, you know, streaming capability, which is good um, because, you know, if I'm going to be trying to watch some online learning or do some uh, some kind of streaming video on this, or maybe I'm going to do something with GeForce now, uh, you know, I want to know that I can be able to handle this. So good. The quality is fine. The only problem I have comes as a result of the way that some of these sensors are going to tell me how the system is running right now. And it really comes down to right here is this Pegatron Corporation uh, Violet codename, NVIDIA MCP, uh, and the graphics processor itself, uh, the GeForce 9100, that temperature range. Right now it's running at 63 degrees. Um, I've seen this go, uh, when I first got this system up on the bench and was working on it, it was in the 80s, like mid 80s temperature wise. Um, I took the heat sink that's on top of that uh, chipset off the system board and um, it had a cheap, cheap, cheap thermal transfer pad uh, that was completely, just completely melted. Uh, so I, I don't, I, I put some, I put some paste on it uh, to try and help a little bit uh, and it and it does help a tiny bit uh, and I did some research online to find out hey you know what's the deal with this is there is this is a is this a problem and it turns out it it does these these chipsets with these integrated packages uh, that Nvidia put together were absolutely horrible when it came to thermal toler thermal capabilities and thermal tolerance um, so it was very common for them to run at a very high temperature range and over enough time completely fail. Uh, the other piece that was unfortunate was because this is an integrated chipset with the graphics, uh, even when I put a, a discrete graphics card into this system and, and had the, you know, the 9100 graphics disabled essentially, the chipset still has to do the rest of its work as the system chipset, right? In terms of handling, in terms of handling the, the, you know, a lot of a lot of other jobs on the system board other than just delivering graphics. And it still ran at the same temperature. Basically, I was getting it; it was getting up into the into this the high seventies, low eighties, even with a discrete graphics card installed. So, short of Short of me Frankensteining some other type of cooling solution onto that chipset, which, you know, doesn't, uh, you know, didn't seem like it was going to be something that I was going to be able to work out reasonably. Um, we just let this go as it is. Um, I tried installing MSI Afterburner to see if it could do something to be able to help out, but it doesn't recognize the graphics, uh, the Engelberg graphics at all. Um, it's looking for a graphics card installed in a PCI slot, so that didn't do any good whatsoever. So it's just a matter of saying, hey, you know what, if it survived a number of years being able to run in someone's office um, for general use, it's probably going to be able to last a couple more years, 
if it didn't die if it didn't die over the last 10 years because of this problem it's not going to it's not going to die in the next two <laughs> i'm hoping so the box is ready to go um you know as soon as things start to clear up with everyone doing the isolation um and and there's some people looking to be able to you know get get some uh systems up and running or even in the meantime if i do get contacted by somebody who is local and wants to get a needs to get a system to help out with with you know getting their kids online to learn or something um this box will be ready to go and because it's already got keyboard and mouse uh, you know, possibly a monitor uh, ready to go with it. It's a you know pretty complete solution uh, ready for someone to get uh, get going and using. So hopefully someone's going to find some help with it. And uh, again, another system saved from the junk pile. So I hope you enjoyed this. Um, and uh, if you got any questions or, or, or advice on this uh, uh, chipset, uh, you know, please put those in the comments. I'd be I'd be happy to hear any any advice that anyone had on how they got around or or MacGyvered a solution to be able to cool that thing off um, without um, without you know creating too much of a challenge. Uh, I would appreciate that information. But once again, thanks very much for your time, and uh, you know, stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll catch you in the next one.